So I wanted to talk a little bit more about how fiber optics are used in cable TV networks. I'm deliberately going to keep this simplistic. I'm going to avoid some of the numbers and uh, specifications and acronyms that don't mean anything to anybody. I want to give just a general idea of what fiber optic cable is about. They call them an HFC network, hybrid fiber coax network. That's because we're building on top of the old coax network that we've had for decades. Cable companies are cheap. Everything's got to be done economically. There's all kinds of uh, different ways fiber to curb and fiber to house and uh, uh, broadband over fiber. Uh, all kinds of different ways to go. But mostly they're doing this old hybrid fiber coax because they have this existing network of coax cable. It's perfectly good. Lots of capacity on coax. So they really don't need to go fiber to the house in most places. It is coming, but for the most part nowadays it's hybrid fiber coax. Coax can carry a lot of data. Nothing like a fiber, but can carry a lot of data on a coax. Especially with the new schemes they have for compression. So, I want to talk a little bit about fiber optics itself before I get more into this. So you've probably all seen the, you know, uh, pencil in a glass type deal. You know, it, the pencil looks broken. Marker pen in this case. Oh, Mancelona. Um, so that's called refraction. Because the light's traveling at different speeds through the air than it is the water. And even different glasses have different refraction rates. So all a cable, uh, fiber cable is, is a very thin strand of real high purity glass. And they pull it, like fiberglass, they pull it into just a thin little strand. It's actually thinner than a hair. Like less than half of what a hair is. Of course, hair is very and all that. It's so thin that it'll poke right through your skin. So that's a danger issue with dealing with fiber. Um, the stripped down fiber, you know, absent the jacket. And this jacket isn't to scale. The jacket would actually be even bigger to scale. And the jacket's what carries the color code. They use telephone color codes, uh, which are bigger than electrical resistor color codes. It's got more numbers to it, more colors to it. It can be a little bit confusing. Some of the colors are kind of close. Anywho, it gives you a, a bigger... Usually things are done in 12s a lot. 12 12s for a gross. And a lot of times fibers are packed that way. You'll have 12 bundles of 12 or 8 bundles of 12 or whatever. There's all kinds of different specs you can get for a main fiber trunk. But even one little fiber can carry a tremendous amount of data. So basically, I was getting back to refraction. Different glasses have different refraction rates. So they take this little tiny strand of glass and they coat it with a bigger layer of glass called cladding. And it's a glass with a different refractive index. Not by much. But the index of refraction is a little bit different. And as you know, when you look into water at the wrong angle, it'll reflect. Uh, you'll get, you know, like a mirror. If you look into a pond in the right conditions, you'll get a mirror-like reflection. And that's basically how this fiber works. The inner core versus the outer core acts like a mirrored surface because there's a different refraction rate, just like the top of the water would have reflection. So this tiny core of high purity glass, light's injected into it, and when it hits the other glass, there's a different refraction rate. It looks like a mirror. It bounces right back through the fiber. And it's like a stone being thrown down a pipe, you know, and it'll ricochet down the pipe. And that's kind of how it works with uh, fiber. Nothing really travels through the glass like a, it doesn't travel like a water pipe. It kind of ricochets down. And if you bend a fiber too fast, the bend radius is the minimum bend radius you can have. If you bend it too far, light will actually escape the fiber. It'll actually penetrate the other cladding and even the jacket. And if uh, there's a test instrument called, uh, I'm not sure what they call it, but it's just basically a red laser, real bright red laser you put on a fitting, and you can see where light's leaking out of a cable, and you can actually bend the cable and see the light starting to leak out of a bend of the cable, right through the jacket and everything. 
So this outer jacket, like I said, is bigger. And it carries a color code. Inside of that is this fiber. And this part of the fiber is smaller than your hair, like half, maybe less. And then there's a core that's even tinier. Now there is something called uh, multi-mode fiber cable, usually orange jumpers in a patch panel, usually yellow jumpers for a single mode in a patch panel. Cable really doesn't use multi-mode for much or anything that I know of. It's mostly used in a building, uh, inner building LAN, you know, local area network type situation. It's less precise cables, it's much cheaper, much higher loss much higher um, dispersion down the cable because it's multi-mode, it's got a bigger core more stuff can reflect and take different multi-paths through the cable having such a thin core kind of limits how much this cable can carry, they call it single mode and it avoids multi-pathing as it goes down the as it progresses down the fiber whereas if you had a wider pipe, you know, a wider core more multipathing will go on, and even a little more straight, you know, light emissions and stuff like that, all combined with signals taking a slightly different, you know, blurring the signal, blurring your pulses, if you're, if you're talking digital. Uh, so multi-mode um, has less dispersion, it can go much further distances, and that's why we use it, I mean, not multi, single mode. Uh, less dispersion, much further distances. I will get to that in a sec. I want to get back to the basics here. So that's your basic propagation down the cable. That's why they call it single mode because it's only going to have a limited amount of paths you can go ricocheting down the pipe. So the light used in uh, cable TV, fiber optics, or any, pretty much any fiber optics for, for uh, practical uses is usually infrared. And even though you can't see it, it can still be dangerous to your eyes, which makes it kind of a, a double danger because you, you don't even see it happening. If you look into a fiber that's being powered by an infrared laser, it can actually start killing cells on your retina as you're looking through your eye. And uh, you don't even see the light, but you start like losing pixels of your uh, vision, losing uh, cells, you know, retina cells. And that's pretty much permanent. So you really have to be careful with uh, lasers, and there's a whole bunch of laser safety you need to get into if you're going to be actually in this field that you should know and understand quite well. So single mode fiber, as I said, less dispersion, more distance. It's pretty much all we use. There's something called a V number. I won't get into that. But if you looked at the frequency response, they actually would say wavelength, wavelength response. Sometimes we even talk about colors, even though it's all invisible light. But if you char charted uh, nanometer wavelength, um, as you went through, you would see there's actually little, uh, this is loss, so it's a higher loss. There's actually little dips where you've got areas of low loss. And um, this isn't necessarily zero out here, but I'm just taking a spot. The ones we use are around 1300 and around 1600. I think it's like 1310 and uh, 1550 or 1590 or something. But we got these little hot areas here where we get really good transmission through this particular sizing of fiber that's pretty much standardized for a single mode fiber. So I say it's a bit of a misnomer because we actually use both these frequency areas and we actually can split little tiny differences like 13, you know, 1300 and 1310. Um, they actually split them finer than that. You can have like eight or seven, several fibers, several channels at just slightly different frequencies grouped around 1310 and send them all at once. And then you can do the same thing again around 1500 or 1600. Um, so you can use these sweet spots, and there's more than one sweet spot, is what I'm trying to tell you. But we mainly use the one around 1300 and one around 1600 is our sweet spots. And uh, you can actually have many different lights, many different signals, independent of each other on a fiber. And even one signal on a fiber 
um, just one forward signal on a fiber with nothing else in that fiber but that one signal it can carry the whole say it's an AM modulated fiber I won't get too deep into the modulation right now let's say it's a typical AM modulated fiber can carry the whole span of the cable channels all on one fiber easily and a lot more uh, so where are we at now yeah, multi-mode would have a wider core. Jacket carries the, the uh, color code. Light can go right through the jacket and through the cladding if it's bent too far. Total internal reflection is the main idea, though. Light is totally, normally, totally reflected inside the fiber. It doesn't escape unless you bend the fiber too much. I'm going to try to get some outdoor shots of some installations of fiber. Comment a little bit on those. And I talked more about this distribution network on a different video. Um, how we've got actually three signals combined to the customer. Uh, you have a forward broadcast, which is your whole cable TV lineup. Your forward narrow cast, which is typically your modem signals. Maybe pay-per-view signals. Which uh, can still be video in some cases. And plus return going the other way. Which is kind of a narrow cast signal too, very narrow cast. So these three signals are combined at the hub and sent out to a node, and then the node feeds the cable network, you know, the old coax. And future uh, optical networks will go from this point and go optical from this point. There's kind of a low end optical. I don't think it's multi mode, but it's lower end than typical. Um, to go that final length from the node to the house. This is an example of a fiber optic installation. Fiber optic node. A fiber optic splicing case. And something they call snowshoes. See there's one on both sides. Usually they're further apart than this. And those are used to store cable. So they can take cable down and bring it down to a truck with a trailer and do uh, fusion splicing in the trailer. We don't use mechanical splicing in cable very much. Not at all in my experience. It's always fusion splicing which is a very precise project process. I have seen it done in the wild but uh, <laughs>